answer. Because you are that, you are capable. You are gifted, and you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. It's okay to be soft. It's okay to be opinionated. It's okay to be different. And it's so okay to just be. The world awaits to receive you. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Blessings on Sensor Enlightenment family. Yes, yes, yes. You're here with Grace Levi for Improv Live. I wasn't planning on going live um, on this particular platform, which we entitled Uncensored Enlightenment Talk, but I really felt like this was something very important that we needed to talk about, and I also wanted to take the opportunity to say, I told you so. Maybe you didn't want to hear it from me, but you're going to hear it tonight. Not in those exact words, but what we're going to do is actually... <clears throat> Talk about Tasha K video that she just released yesterday on her back channel, reacting to the actual Cardi B lawsuit. So now that the lawsuit is over, and as she stated, she's waving the white flag, she is able to speak her piece. So as I was watching the video, a lot of things caught my attention and I was just like, yep, 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 exactly what I thought. So we're going to react. I'm here. I'm ready. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to actually react to the first 45 minutes. If it's okay with Tasha K, I'm going to do it. The reason why I'm going to do it too is because I think Tasha K needs a little bit more representation. I know she can represent herself, but there's a lot of people on, uh, especially YouTube, that just hate her guts and just were just aiming for her to fall. And it saddens me as a black woman that we have a nation of people who are, sorry, the back of my hair is sticking up, I gotta fix it. We have a nation of people who are literally, we're at the bottom of the totem pole, but we're always finding a way to keep each other's down, okay? Yeah, and I'm gonna say, we always find a way to keep each other's down. When we're in a situation like this, that the situation that we're in as black people, is supposed to be hands down, we're gonna handle our business, stick together, and on the out and on, on the inside, we're gonna handle some stuff. But just with that concept being said, because y'all know how I am, y'all know how Grace Levi is. E1 B1 first, then we'll deal with the rest. Okay. So on that note, I want to send love and blessings to actually Tasha K. Um, she's a strong woman. Um, the way that she handled the situation, the way that she came off in this commentary um, was very big of her, as well as I can see the pain that she's going through. And it takes really a bigger person to admit to when they're wrong or admit the truth in the situation, as well as move forward, laugh about it, learn about it and, you know, grow. But this is something actually that I think our nation needs to actually reevaluate reevaluate because when it comes to us actually sticking together nada we're, we're very 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 choosy when it comes to us but when people of other nations do stuff oh they got a lot of leeway and i'm just gonna leave it like that so because i already have a broadcast that's scheduled for 9 p.m we're gonna get this broadcast started so i want to say shout out to chasha k um much peace and blessings to you sis Baby, it takes a strong, strong woman to go through what she went through, even though she caused her own headache, but I'm going to have to give it to her. So let's get this started. I got a little bit of battery. Well, y'all, I know I don't go live over here a lot. I know I don't. I know I don't. I'm going to try to get to a lot of it. Phone, okay? I don't even know how this shit got on my phone. I had like fourteen hundred dollars in subscriptions a month. Okay, so oh, what the fuck you talking? About? One in this part specifically, what she's talking about is basically having to um, consolidate. You know, talking about hey, I'm broke. I'm broke just like the rest of you guys. I don't know what the perception is, 
but this is what I had to do. So she was talking about some subscription she had to cancel, but I want to get to actually when she talks about the actual case and how she felt about it and her actual words. Okay. First three years of a business surviving depends on you, you know? And like, we ain't got sued, you know, right when we started our business. The lawsuit was filed 2018, if I'm not mistaken. We had started our business in 2018. So right when we officiated Kiwi Studios is when we got sued. So like I did everything that I could and <laughs> glory to be to God, you know what I'm saying? To save our business. Like that, that is the main, that is the main thing. This is something that I wanted to do my whole life. Okay. And in business, most businesses are out of business the first three years. They don't fucking make it. Now, I want you guys to listen to what she says about business because this is not a lie. And I'm glad that she knows this now, especially about black owned businesses and the way that we are perceived. This is why it's so important for us to, to really support us hands down, no turning around, no questions asked. I mean, not like, you know, just using people and scamming people, you know, charging them outrageous prices like some black people do. But I'm actually talking about really support good, solid businesses that's going to help you build the generational wealth that you want to. But let's listen to uh, Miss Kibi and what she says about business. You know what I'm saying? They don't make it. So the fact that we're, what is it? We're 2018, officiated the business. We didn't know what the fuck we was doing. We did that shit on legal zone. <laughs> shit, that's why them lawyers in court tore that shit all the way fuck up. They was like, well, who owns what and what? We was like, we ain't got no goddamn operate business. This shit was so ratchet. You have no idea. This shit was so ratchet. Like, because we had been we had been the type to start, you know, do our own businesses because we had own tra like transportation companies, but we did it ourselves. We had never sought out attorneys to do anything. Like I, I literally didn't get an attorney to officiate our business until like after the lawsuit, like, because I was just like, we got to fix this shit. Like we open, you know what I'm saying? Like anybody could come say any motherfucking thing. You feel me? Like it was such a, a fucking like wake up call because you'd be like, oh, this what white people really be doing? Yes. So we're going to start right there. Yes, yes. And yes. As a black owned business, I know from watching other minority and also non-minority business. By evaluating both of them, you have to understand that when we're going into someone else's playing field, you have to have A, B, C, D, and E, and F together. I mean, literally have your paperwork in order. We're not only talking about operation agreement, not only just your EIN number, having your tax ID number, having it registered with the state, having a business plan, actually keeping your books in order, actually paying taxes, actually having a structurized marketing plan, focus plan, all of that, all of that. That's what goes into a business. And I want you to listen to what she says, because it's times when even when you do do all of what I just said as black owned businesses, we're still perceived a certain way. And and this is based on her experience right now. And I'm going to back it up. It's based on my experience too, baby. Like you learn, like the shit that I've learned, like y'all have no idea. It was gold. I was just like, who, what I know now, you can't learn the shit that I fucking learned in no type of school. You can't learn the shit that I learned in no type of school. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you cannot. You, you, what I, what we went through, you, I couldn't pay no, you cannot pay not one attorney to sit down with you, especially as a black business owner. Cause I was reading many articles on this, Listen, that black businesses are the most vulnerable businesses in the United States of America. Matter of fact, in the world, and they're the easiest to get sued with frivolous lawsuits and most commonly lose just based off of perception. Let's stop right there. She is not lying. She is not lying. Not only, we're not even talking in terms of being sued, but we are talking in terms of participating in business. They look at us as incompetent. You can go ahead and pretend, but when you go into a higher level of playing field, such as court and dynamics like this, you're going to see how they treat you. This is why it was very important for her to have competent lawyers. 
if y'all remember, I did a reaction video before about Tasha K in this situation and Cardi B because I just had to talk about it. And I knew in why her appeal was denied. It wasn't denied because her claims was frivolous. And she's going to she's going to disclose the same thing what I just said. It was because administration pos, pop, pop, excuse me, administrative processes. Let me say that correctly. OK, but before I get too technical, let's just go back to the way we're perceived that black businesses. And when we go into these higher institutions, we have to be able to pay like we weigh. And even when times when you're able to pay like your way, if you do not play the game the way they want you to play the game, allegedly you may end up like Michael Jackson, Bill Cosby. Kanye West. But you ain't here from me. I'm going to take a whole glass and shut up and let Tasha K finish talking. Of you just being a black business and automatically deemed as ignorant. Let me tell you, I'm going to tell you something. This true story. It's all in the transcripts. You know what the judge said to me after mm. the, the, this is before the verdict was entered. You know what he said to me? He said, uh, first he had, he had, he had uh, complimented uh, Cardi saying that his, his son's I guess we're fans of hers or whatever. And he don't really listen to her. That's what he said. He said, but, um, you know, we, uh, I'm familiar with your song with Bruno Mars. And he was, you know, he was smitten. I mean, she's, she's a celebrity, right? All of them was smitten in there. Everybody was sitting on her side. Nobody was on my side. Just me, my husband, my lawyers and God. So um, then he looks to me and says, because like, when I tell you, he really put me through it. He yelled at me every chance he got. He didn't yell at her not one time. He was just so, so rude. And everything in me, I was like, okay, this is this is a test of my ego. This, this is a test of my ego. Mm -hmm. I literally said this on the stand. This man had my blood pressure up so high because the shit that he would just say off the rip, because I was on the stand majority of the time. It Wait, before she start talking about the stand and things like that, let's just, just rewind. Let's just rewind because I know a little bit about court. I am a legal nursing consultant, so I understand processes. And legal nursing consultants, we research. I love to research law. So administrative processes, researching the law, providing the facts. This is what I do. This is what I do for the lawyers, okay, in the background. Mm -hmm. So... One of the things that she said, what I felt like was a conflict of interest, like most um, cases, there is some type of conflict of interest, is that the judge already acknowledged before the end of the court case that he had knowledge of Cardi B and liked her music. First and foremost, he's not supposed to do that. Her lawyer is supposed to knew to come in right there and say, oh, wait, ob objection. And he's like, you're objecting to me. I just wanted to put that on the record, conflict of interest. Okay? Because what her lawyer did not do was record certain elements that she needed for her appeal. You're going to listen to what she says and why the appeal did not go through. Because exactly what I said, when you're having your first case, if you know you're about to lose, you're getting close to that something, you're supposed to say, set up an argument or a point in the case where you're going to bring up and put on record that you will be filing the pill. It could be based on a mistake that just happened and say, I object um, based on that, um, the, the law that apply and why you're going to be filing the pill. The judge acknowledged it. The case goes on. That's all her lawyers had to do. Okay. So with that goes to say, the familiarity with Cardi B was definitely, to me, was a conflict of interest, and the lawyers should have highlighted that. The yelling at Tasha K the whole time, I want to tell you, that happens all the time, especially to us. Do I don't know if it was Larry Hoover, but it was a Black Panther Party. At one point, he was trying to represent himself in court, and um, they literally taped his whole face shut so he could not talk and represent himself. We have been treated with such extremity and disrespect in court and out of court. And I know that just by being on both sides, suing somebody, which is suing counties, baby, as well as going to traffic court, you know, actually going, um, being involved in some type of criminal case, but it had nothing to do with me, try, almost getting set up, having to do research because people crooked. You know, when I was living in Newark, stuff happened. That's why I had to be the hood lawyer. We had to figure this out because nobody had our back. And you're going to hear what she says, too, about when she went to look for a lawyer, how it was so hard to find a lawyer that did not know Cardi B 
or did not like Cardi B. Okay, so just highlighting, just highlighting some facts. Okay, the way the judge was acting was totally out of character. He kept her rude. I mean, he. I'm sorry. He he kept being rude to her because I just made a note because he was trying to stress her out. You're gonna hear what he says to her. He's gonna say something to her that makes me know that he had a predisposition of her and he was doing things to try to get her to behave in a manner of the predisposition. Let's listen. It was just me. Hmm. She she only came on the stand, like Cardi only came on the stand like once, if that, right? I was on the stand the entire time for three weeks. So the jury, everybody got to know me, right? And I know my content is unorthodox, you know? It's, it's not, not to say it's not for everybody, but it's hard for people to take me serious, especially, you know, when you got two black people in here and they started their business themselves and they didn't know how to fucking organize the business because we did it on legal zone. So it's hard to really take what I did as a, as a, as a news personality serious because I wasn't backed by anybody, right? At all. So, but here's the thing. I'm not going to say he was racist. I'm not going to say that. I just feel that you have to understand this. That was, it was Georgia. Georgia is damn near on the outskirts of Georgia. Now Atlanta is black, but on the outskirts of Georgia is redneck Riviera. These white people, they have, they're grown up. They grow up with the perception of black. Just like I grew up in the redneck Riviera, Panama city, Florida. I grew up with a perception of white people. Right. It's just the reality of it is I'm not going to say, could you call me prejudice? No. But when you indoctrinate somebody mm -hmm. from a child, you, you it's really what it is. Yep. So I just don't. Um, <laughs> yes, that's the title of the video. So I just I just look at it. I don't I'm, I'm not going to call our judge racist, but he did say this to me. He said after he had basically complimented her, he looked at me. He said, Miss Kibbe, he said, I'm very shocked to see based off of the content that you present. Um. I'm, I'm very surprised that you're so reserved. He said, I'm very surprised that you're so reserved. He said, I wouldn't have expected that from you. He said, but now that I've spent these three weeks sort of, you know, getting to know you, he was like, you know, I can understand why you are so reserved because you're from where my brother lives, Panama City, Florida. And I can see that not only are you reserved, you're a bit conservative. I, I would have never guessed that you were conservative. He said, given the, the nature of your content. But as I got to know your content, I see what it is that you do. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I was just like, so. OK, so let's stop because the verdict come in after this. I will tell you, this happened to me in court at one point. But specifically, what she just said already highlight that the judge already had a predisposition of her, wanted her to be, I guess, uh, loud, obnoxious and things like that because of her content. But then when he really honed in on it and paid attention, he he figured he figured her personality, her prototype, you know, maybe she's into the gossip, you know, talk loudly. But her overall lifestyle is conservative. And that's what I mentioned to you guys when it comes to representation of the black community. Even though Tasha K got a big mouth and nobody represent us all. I will readily accept her character than someone who is busting it wide open on the stage. No disrespect, because I don't want my daughter to do that. I don't accept that behavior, you know, and I feel some type of way too, having teenagers and my daughter being subjected to that stuff. And she's really thinking that that's okay. That's a strong influence. Okay. So I'm speaking from that conservative perspective to a certain extent too. I don't know what I am, but I just don't like the BS. I'm none of the categories. Y'all see this behind me? This is what I am. Okay. But as you see, the same thing that I evaluated, the judge evaluated about Tasha K. Just being loud, saying what you want to say doesn't mean you're a bad person. But sometimes when you're sneaky, um, you're passive aggressive, uh, you are victim, you play the victim, you know, you use things as your opportunity to uh, get some type of sympathy. Those are the people that you really need to pay attention to. I love a person that's going to tell me what it is from what it is. That's why, like I said, I didn't, whoever in the White House, they're going to do what they want to do. But at least when Trump was in the White House, whatever he was, 
we knew what everybody was thinking and I knew exactly what was what and how to maneuver. But when you had that passive aggressive and if people acting like they're your friend and they care about you, you're going to have, mm, let me just take a whole glass of sugar. Hello. So let us hear the verdict and her response to the verdict. Yeah. You understand now? As soon as he said that, the, the jury went to the back. We had one black person on the jury. Motherfuckers came back. Four million. I said, Oh, baby. I sat there. It was kind of one of the moments, laugh or cry. The laugh or cry, because I was like, I don't know what the fuck going on here. I was like, I don't know what the fuck going on here. <laughs> but I so right here, she talks about how she, you know, reacted to the actual verdict. And I'm glad that her husband was there to give her support because she said literally he was like looking at her with the look. Because it take a man, take a quiet, strong man to tame somebody like her and me. I understand her. And he looked, he was like, girl, I don't say nothing. They're going to hold you in contempt. Take a whole glass and shut the hell up. Listen to him. <laughs> Ain't nobody got no fucking four million dollars for nobody. So I don't know what the fuck. You reading on that paper, all this going through my head, and my husband, because he know me so well, right? Because I was about to stand up <laughs> and give him a oh, fucking baby. show, right? Man, I wish there was cameras in that courtroom so bad, because, like, all of the bullshit that was reported on out here, I'm just like, y'all are fucking lying. Like, y'all are lying. I'll never forget, there was one reporter with Law 360. She said, uh, uh, look, she said, Tasha K. Let me see. Let's move a little. Better forward. back it up. You better back it up, but I, I'm telling you, I I fucking swung and swung and swung and swung until I was like, damn. I was like, I really gave him a reason not to like me. Like half of that shit, like if we would have just left it at what it was and I didn't do all the extra shit, there's no doubt. I'm sure. She must have watched my live because that's exactly what I said. I said it at the beginning, Tasha was cool because the interview actually was someone else telling these things. This was someone who said that they was a firsthand witness. All Tasha had to do was just let that run. And then whatever Cardi did, she took it from there. But the rest of the maliciousness came in when she kept on. One of the things she said about the beginning of the court case was that when they started the court case, they played a few videos of Tasha K talking about Cardi B. And it was really like, she was just like, uh, uh, she said what she said, she didn't take it back because she knew it was the truth, but it came off really harsh. And I, like I told her, I, I understand it. I understand it. I say some things and I'll be like, oh, it's harsh. So, but with that goes to say, that was setting up the tone for how people were supposed to be looking at her. She stayed on the stand the whole time. And Miss Innocent busted wide open, went up there a little bit, uh -huh, uh -huh, cried a little bit, made some stuff up and kept it moving, allegedly. Because you can't, now you can't talk about people because that's one of the things that she's going to say in this reaction video exactly what i said from the beginning this may be a i told you so video and i'm just sorry i said it maybe a lot of people didn't watch it but i said it this was set a setup for commentary and people just like me you who likes to talk and say things to put a cap on how we say things this was just another uh way of uh, uh layering censorship now people in prominent position they have a president. They have some ground to sue people based on this type of activity. It could be similar case or whatever. But as long as they can prove maliciousness, and that's what they did with her, because it wasn't the facts of all the case when you listen to her. Because she she said it was a it wasn't based on that. It was based on something else. Sure, things would have went different. However. Um, but for the most part, like it was kind of like a humbling lesson for me because I was just like, I'm too fucking old to be out here cussing people out like this. This is crazy. But you know, when you when you dealing with it, you know, when you come from where you come from and you used to seeing motherfuckers act the way you act, it don't matter how much money you got, you still that person. That's who I am. But you gotta grow. But it's like there's a choice to be made. It's kind of like Do if you grow up around that. crackheads and you smoke crack. You want to stop smoking crack. You can't continue to go around the crackheads and act like a crackhead. If you want to change, you got to you gotta put forth change. And so to me, this whole experience was humbling because it was just like, if I want to grow into being the brand that I want to be, 
I'm going to have to take some major fucking setbacks. All right. So I'm going to say with, mm -hmm. on that note, just at that position of the video, I'm going to have to be humble and say that I really respect Cardi B for saying that. I mean, ooh, I said Cardi B. She must be watching on one of her, uh, one of her damn groupies because Cardi B watch everything. Oh, my God. You can have one view. She watching it. Anyway, <laughs> baby. Um, as I was saying, I'm going to have to send love and blessings to Tasha because that is very mature of her. In the middle of adversity, my black people, no matter what, even 40, four, well, 40, that's a lot of her $40 billion, $4 billion the whole, okay? She can still learn a lesson, come on camera, show her face, tell her story, and still say what she learned from it. Can nobody not respect? that i'm gonna have to give it to her and just just because i'm doing this commentary i said that i wasn't going to upload on youtube the uncensored enlightenment page because they've been trying to knock me off i'm on my last leg so we on rumble rumble we doing well but i'm going to upload this on youtube you know why because tasha doesn't have representation from black women on youtube or black men it's like everybody everybody hate chris for when it comes to tasha they can't find nothing good in what she do. They can't look at the whole situation for what it is and be non-biased. And that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so we're going to upload it up there. Just hopefully get some spins so she can get some representation outside of herself. Because as she said, when she was in court, nobody was there for her but her, her husband, and God. All of those fans, all of those millions of followers, I'm no disrespect to the winos. Somebody should have showed up there. Somebody should have showed up there. That bug's been trying to come out all night. I've been hearing it and it came in. It's like, oh, it's Georgia. Anyway, somebody should have showed up, winos. No, I'm not official wino. Don't say you should have showed up. I like Tasha K, but I'll call myself a wino. I do water into wine. Okay, so moving forward, I want to go into this next part because she go into a little bit more about like weird stuff happening every time it's a court day, anytime something's about to happen. It's like weird things around her is happening. So she kind of mentioned voodoo. And y'all already know, if y'all do know me from my sister, we talk about that type of stuff. You know, I'm my, my roots is um, the tribe of Levi and Benjamin. Levi is Haiti. And you know, we know this stuff. And it's real. And every nation has their own form of voodoo. Even white Americans do. It's called, what they call that? Uh, they call it, there's this, oh, what is it? I'm looking right at it. It's like something craft. They do it with the stones. They do it with the, the warlocks and things like that. Yeah, even Caucasians. You got the Spanish that deal with the Santa Marias. So she mentioned something like this. So I just want to get into it a little bit because it don't, it don't, it don't shock Mark. It don't shock me, baby. I'm trying to tell you. The only way to go is up. Mm. When you hit bottom, tell you up. can't go no further. And I ain't going in the ground. I'll be damned if I kill myself over some 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 shit like this. I let's move on. Everything walking. She runs into the edible bar. Okay, this is when she talks. Grabs a bunch of fucking ooh, edibles ooh, and ooh, runs out. Like, boom, 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 okay, boom, boom. Funny story. Was, I don't know why. How would you like All to right. collect five? We're going to let this commercial play. That's when she was talking about a transvestite and the thousand dollars that she gave away. And I want y'all to listen to You're that in your own time because uh, when she like talked me. about this thousand dollars that she gave away is literally around the time where Cardi B was trying to freeze her account frivolously. Now, frivolously can be um can take it in two terms the reason why i'm gonna say frivolously because lawyers know how to do what they do they knew that she was going to file a appeal so they went and hurried up and tried to file the paperwork to to put a lien on her bank account which is a fifa okay so they could go seize this capital account but the crazy thing was it wasn't signed off from the judge because the judge already knew that she was going to come in with a pill so the order was not going to be set the only thing is that it was not on record that she was coming in with a pill. I don't, the judge knew, but it wasn't on the court records. Okay. So with that goes to say, Cardi B lawyers, I'm just kind of fastening it up. They hurried up and filed the paperwork, send it to the bank. The bank, I don't know what they did. They hurried up and put a hold on it, but the, the actual um, transaction didn't clear. 
meaning it takes three days for ACH or certain transactions to clear. So once it comes to the bank, they'll put a hold on it, but three days to see, to val validate the check, validate the income and coming in money or going out. So even if it's a child support order, it had to be validated with a, a judge's order, signature, seal, and everything. So this is why she kind of said that the banking person hinted to her, like, don't worry, because the paper's not signed. And, and you also have a paper that is pending in federal court. It is what it is. So let's listen. Me? I do this to everybody. Everybody, everybody. Shit, everybody on the playlist, okay? Now, I, um, so I'm looking for lawyers, and everybody was just a fan. They was like, yeah, we'll fight it. You know, oh, my God, Cardi. They was just like, I was just like, I ain't going to find no lawyers. So my two little lawyers that came through, they was just like, we don't like her. I was just like, okay, but will you take this case? Listen to our lawyers. <laughs> this is all I got. I think they had said... They wanted they wanted twenty thousand dollars a retainer. I said I got five. That's all I got. I got five five k. They said we'll take it. We'll take it. That's when I posted my little picture. I was pregnant. My hair was to the side. We'll come to the side just like it is now. Bitch, I posted that picture. I was like, we ready to fight. <laughs> Now, this is what I'm going to say, because she's going to talk a little bit more about her lawyers <laughs> and her lawyers wasn't competent. She said that they were new lawyers. We'll listen to what she says. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck going on here, but we ready to fight. God damn it. <laughs> listen, bitch, I'm going down fighting. <laughs> hey, bitch. All right. <laughs> so, no, but I'm going to tell you about the witchcraft because the uh the day we got the it's always some shit happening when it comes to this case it's always some some signs some real strong signs from mm. the universe this is what i'm talking about let me let me fucking like this down okay all right cool because the chat was in my face i'm like god damn i can't see nothing okay so and that shit again you know i got add and stuff and that's why i kept like thinking and stuff normally i don't mm. put the chat up you know, know y'all know but anyway so I'll never forget this when we got the day the appeal came in. And the first appeal that we put in, Listen that was not our fault, right? That was nobody's fault. The judge forgot to enter in the final order because she had asked for an injunction. This was right, right after the case. Then they went back and asked for an injunction. So he had to amend the order. So what happened was we went ahead and filed the appeal, but the order was being amended. So when we filed the appeal, and I paid for that appeal, so it's very expensive, okay? Um, they came back and said, we cannot accept the appeal because, excuse me, how much battery I got left? Let me get, let me get a charger too. I only got 11%. Um, they couldn't file an appeal because the judge hadn't closed out our case. So basically everything got rejected. I'm talking about boxes and boxes of exhibits because you're talking about a, a trial that lasted like three weeks Thank it was like exhibits, exhibits exhibits right and the the appellate court wanted all of this shit and so we we I, shit even i had to help mail that shit in it was this is exactly what i told you guys when you're filing your appeal is nothing new going on that case but everything that you represented in the first place so black people you better represent your case to their fullest capacity the first time because if you're planning on doing the pill you had to call that out throughout the trial so the trial so the um when it goes to appellate court they can review these documents and look for constitutional issues administration issues and things like that okay it was a lot of shit, right so when it came back i was like damn so that's when i guess be between that gap she didn't think i was going to go back and file the other appeal is when they went and took that paperwork from state court okay from a case that was in federal court and sent it to my bank to try to freeze my account and we got that undone okay and so not only that uh yeah so we go back to the judge the judge's email he was like oh i'm sorry my bad you know. So what I'm going to do, I'm only going to react to the next seven minutes of this because this is the most important thing that she says in the end, because that's what I was thinking. But I said, I'm not going to let my conspiracy mind take me to the left because I already know when it comes to us, when it comes to us, 
Money talks, BS walks. And if you can't prove it, it didn't happen. But you're going to listen to what she says about how she feels about her lawyers and the way they treated her after they lost the second appeal. Baby, it sounded like it was a money grab to me. You know, boom. So he ends up closing it out. Somebody got paid off. Then I get to Africa. So when we get to Africa, we're getting ready to send a new appeal in. Allegedly. Was something that happened. Oh, the superseders bond. We had got into it online. And I was just like, this lady, you y'all don't understand. This paperwork and shit, it'll piss you off. It's paperwork. It will piss you off. So I got online. That's when I was like, you a two-year celebrity, all this shit. She done ran to the judge. Da, 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 da. I need my four million dollars now. So that's when he had ordered her, he had ordered me to do a superseders bond. I said, I ain't got no money for no superseders bond. I ain't got the credit for it. Baby. You gotta have good credit. To get a superseders, especially in the millions, okay. And I'm not gonna put up no superseders. And even if I put up the superseders bond, they wouldn't have gave the money to her. So let's just stop. They probably would have gave the money to her. Um, in between, if they could have sent it that fast, in between when she filed the appeal. But what she is saying is 100 right. If she did not know the law and signed that paper, she already would have signed the FIFA. And she's like, what's that? Oh, no, I ain't signing that. I'm broke. Because this is all a paperwork game, and it's all about you acquiescing to the situation. There's always a back door. How you think these people got rich the way they did, especially at Trump? I'm going to take a whole glass and shut up. At all. They would have just said, we're holding this in case the appeal I don't know about that. Uh, comes back or doesn't come back. It's kind of like credit per se but if like say for instance the pill would have went in her favor which it did they still wouldn't have given her the money it's just a bond that's it it's just a bond with the court they just kind of want you to put something up so the little money that i put up probably would have went to her i didn't get that far but i knew they weren't gonna pay her no four million dollars off of no uh i think it was like 10 percent that i had to put up four hundred thousand right of that i was like i'm not doing that I absolutely not and i knew i knew I knew the federal rules and I was just like, what, what's going to happen if I ain't got it? I ain't got it. So I just ignored it. I was like, whatever. And besides, he didn't sign anything. He, he just it. wrote it in a note because he, I don't, you know, from what. Stop right there. Just listen to what she said. She said he didn't sign the document that they presented to the actual bank. He wrote it in a note and put it inside of the court case. Judges can do that, but that note actually goes into the case. It goes to the appeal um, sector. So this is how they communicate. Through the back door. All I'm saying, just listen to what she said. Can I play it back just a little bit? Listen. I knew the federal rules, and I was just like, listen. "What? what's going to happen if I ain't got it? Dirty game. I ain't got it. So I just ignored it. I was like, whatever. And besides, he didn't sign anything. He just wrote it in a note because he, I don't, you know, from what we had like read and stuff, and I had talked to several different lawyers, he didn't have jurisdiction to do that anyway because then, the case was was already sent the to note, the appellate court. The appellate court. So I was just ignoring that. So when we come back, that's when I found out. I was just I'm like, she got the account on hold. So when she was like, $1,000 on the account, I was just like, okay, well, let me give it away. Let me give it away because this is not how. So this is why she gave the thousand dollars away. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Tasha's smart because in the spiritual world, what she did, did y'all don't know what she did, did. When you know somebody playing voodoo on you, you got to give a little bit more. You got to praise a little bit more. You have to be extra nice. So she said, you know what? She trying to take everything from me. This is not mine. This is yours, God. This is what I got from that. And that's why she gave the thousand dollars away and people couldn't understand it because your spirit is not there. I understood. I said, baby, she ready to come in for the kill. I mean, you're going to go down fighting, but you're going to fight. Like she said, she was like, I'm going down fighting. But you got to have the knowledge. So she had a lawyers that was incompetent, lawyers that was not competent in the field. Let's finish listening. How are you going to get this money? You're going to get this money legally. You not gonna you not gonna try to bully your way to this money. You you not gonna do that. So before I let you have it, I'ma give it away. And that's when I gave my thousand dollars. Rebuke my and reverse thousand. those demons. I ain't have it, but I gave it away. Back back, back back. Okay, it's but back real. to my appeal. So the second appeal. Second appeal, we resend everything. Shut up. 
My goddamn lawyers. That's why I said me and Jonathan Majors got the same lawyers. For real. Yeah, y'all really. got set up lawyers. Y'all got lawyers that are, they all know each other. And somebody got to be the win man. Somebody got to be the fall man. Somebody can owe somebody else a favor. And that's how that works. And then somebody gets paid off just a little bit, allegedly. Allegedly. I, I don't know none of this. I ain't seen none of this. I'm just saying allegedly. Really do. Um, so we send in everything. This is the second appeal that I pay for. Second appeal she paid They are very expensive. So my thing is, her lawyer is supposed to be competent enough to know that the case wasn't closed. The first time before they even sent the appeal. So they were literally, like I told, like I said in a few lives, these lawyers, no disrespect, they will know that they're burning your pockets out. There was a lawyer that came on the Wiley show. I, I used the clip on, on urban politics, how she told on herself. Literally, they would take a case, know that you're gonna lose, and, and then just File paperwork, file favorites, paperwork that don't mean nothing, don't make sense, mistakes. Just like she said, when you listen to what the lawyer said who evaluated her case, not her lawyer, but a black lawyer, she said it was all because it was administrative clerical errors with the documents. And that's what the judges would remember. They said, Oh, the judge yelled at her lawyer. Why is the judge yelling at your lawyer? Because of incompetency. The judge was not supposed to do that because it set a tone for the jurors and the judge just set the tone for them to tell them what to do because he said, this is how you're supposed to look at this case. He gives them the rules right at the beginning. If you ever went to court. Listen, we got four more minutes. Paying for an appeal is like paying for a trial. Mm. Right. It's expensive. It's so if y'all didn't get what I said before she keep going, it was her lawyer's fault. The first time they should have read the original court documents, made sure that everything was closed out properly and then filed the case. They were just taking her money and moving. Expensive. So they send in everything. That's trifling. Their side sends in their stuff. We send in our stuff. The appellate court said they got everything. So on the day I got the appeal verdict back, I'm getting ready to board a flight to go do the unique interview. But I didn't know that I was interviewing Unique. I was supposed to interview Monique and Derek and some other people, and everybody canceled that day. This is before Absolutely the appeal went down. Talk about. Right? And Ooh. I was like, what is, what's going on? Since 5 o'clock in the morning, I was like, my flight book. I was like, we got all these interviews scheduled. Everybody canceled. What the fuck going on? Right? Mm. I was just like, I said, like, whatever. We already got these flights booked. I'm going to find me somebody to interview. And that's when I found Unique. Right? And then Rocket called me and gave me the phone interview to rebuttal that shit. So um, I, I literally went to Atlanta on Facebook. What I noticed is every time I go to Atlanta, there's some bullshit going on. I swear to God, every fucking time, every time. He's I was just like, there's some goddamn root work going down uh, down here in the goddamn mountains of Georgia. I don't know the fuck. But when we got yeah. to the to the fucking uh, uh, what do you call that shit? The tarmac where you 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 board the plane. Our lawyer sent us a text message saying, "We're sorry to inform you, but you lost the appeal." Listen, did you hear what she just said? Her lawyer sent her a text and said, sorry, you just lost the, the appeal. After spending probably a half a million dollars with them, I'm just talking. I'm going to say at least $500,000 in this case. I'm just talking. Did you hear what she said? The lawyer said a text. I said, did they just text me that shit? They just text me that shit? No respect. All them, did I text you my money? They don't have respect for us. I'm like, did I text you my fucking money? No. Hey. No, I do, but you text me some some shit like that, and that oh, I'm in court, so I'll get back to you later. I had to call them. Mm. Matter of fact, not only did I have to call them, it was like six hours later, mm. and that's when I just said, you know, I was on the plane after they had text. I said, you know what? At this point, I'm just waving in the white flag. Fuck that shit. I just sent. I was like, I didn't even know why we had lost the appeal. I didn't even care. I had prayed that this whole case would be over. In March, I said, in March, this shit is going to be over. The appeal is going to be over. Case is going to be over. Fuck this shit. I'm done. I ain't spending no more money on legal fees. Fuck that. Right? So I'm sitting on the plane. We ain't even took off yet. Right after this. Oh, you know, I just got on Twitter. I was like, fuck that shit. We lost. Sorry to inform y'all. Boom, throwing in the white towel. I apologize, Cardi. Sincerely, mm -hmm. bitch, you humbled me. Paperwork, procedural, 
we're done. Okay. That's it. So then we, we land in Atlanta, we go get some food and then, you know, well, what she says, allegedly you won because of paperwork and procedural errors, not because you was right. That's what she was saying. Oh, so we get back, we get to the Airbnb and shit. You know, fucking uh, internet's on fire. They on fire. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm like, you know, why did I lose a pill? I said, you know what? Let me take a nap. So I took a nap, got back up, called, well, called another lawyer that I have. Look what she had to do. She black. She black, black, black. And I said, um, I've been trying to call my lawyers. They ain't, they ain't answer. So yeah. I said, could you tell me why the fuck I lost the pill? That's what I, I just, I just want to know. Cause they ain't told me there's something I lost. Right. I was like, you, you mean to tell me that from the evidence that we submitted they they found favor right because they let me tell you something that that's a whole nother thing that's a whole nother subject right? i was like there's no way there's no way there was evidence that i like i said i believe that was not allowed to be submitted because the judge has their discernment and the judge's discernment could be whatever the judge feel like it especially in good old georgia no disrespect because I got to go to court soon, but I'm going to let y'all know the truth. I already know what it is. The judge sets the tone, make up stuff as it go. And then if you don't say the right things, contempt. This is how it works. On the outskirts of, you know, the black areas. I'm not going to say Atlanta better, but I went to court in Clayton County. And it sure enough was a better process. It was very diverse. Um, the white, black, all types of stuff went on, you know, and they were cool. But outside, the other side, baby, it's so, railroad season. She was like, um, Tasha, you lost the appeal because your lawyers forgot to uphold your right or something. Listen. Uh, preserve your right on record to file an appeal. I said, what? Wait, what? She said, they didn't even look at it. They didn't read it. They didn't even know what what, what what do you mean? Kiki? Kiki? I said, Key Era. Kiki, what are you talking about? She said, they didn't look at it. They didn't call her back. They got both sides. They got everybody's side. I said, Kira, this is our second appeal. She said, I know. So she literally stayed on the phone with me for free, did not bill me, and went through every single thing, procedural error that went wrong. So I said, you mean to tell me everything else was sent in but my right to preserve an appeal. I said, bitch, somebody got paid off. Look, look what she said. Stop it again. The lawyers Say it again. To uphold your right or something. What she said. Uh preserve mm -hmm. your right on record to mm -hmm. file an appeal. I said, what? Wait, what? She said they didn't even look at it. I said, what what, what are you in? Kiki? Kiki. I said, Key Ara. Kiki, what are you talking about? She said, they didn't look at it. Mm. They got both sides. They got everybody's side. I said, Listen. Kira, this is our second appeal. She said, I know. So she literally stayed on the phone with me for free, did not bill me, and went through every single thing, procedural error that went wrong. So I said, you mean to tell me everything else was sent in, but my right to preserve an appeal? I said, bitch, somebody got paid off. Mm. Had to. This is a I said, this is what I do I said, all my interviews got motherfucking canceled today. We're gonna stop right there because what she said is exactly what I said allegedly it seems to be, or these lawyers was very incompetent, or they just wanted to throw the case. I'm 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 very disgusted with that because it should have been fair game. So Tasha K, I want to say this to you, baby. We're going to say this just like this. I love you, baby girl. I'm going to put a better picture of you. Put in a better picture. Let me put that picture. I love you, and I send much respect to you for having the stamina to go through this with someone who's allegedly as big as Cardi B, knowing that, well, you didn't know then, but you know now that the system is bought and paid for, baby. And if you think not, this is a wake-up call. You're going to have to understand the back door to the back door to the back door. You cannot trust them. This is why I'm so detail oriented in what I do, because I've been in a situation where I had the others represent me and it didn't seem totally correct. Because I asked the question, like, wait, something is missing. So thank God that you continue to go with your spirit. 
Um, you did say that you should have listened to the people who were talking about your lawyers because you wasn't paying attention to them that much. I'm just going to have to throw that jab, baby, because once they started messing up with procedure areas, errors, you should have said, no, I'm about to stop. We're going to try to find somebody. I would have even found, I would have called Candice Owens. We know Candice Owens have a lawsuit against Cardi B, y'all. Don't, don't forget about that. I'm going to definitely talk about that. It's a defamation lawsuit. Cardi B now said something about her husband reckless, but then you want to go sue Tasha K. Don't forget about all these numerous um, court issues that Cardi B actually had. So Tasha K, I think you should have went to Candice Owens and be like, baby, I need a lawyer. She would have found the most conservative lawyer to knock her right on down. So if you ever want to file up here, you better look that direction. What I would say to close off, I don't know specifically what you could do as far as these lawyers. I think what I would do is file a complaint with the Bar Association for incompetency. First and foremost, you need to have some type of knowledge in what uh, field you're representing your client. Uh, there are specialties in law. Their specialty, like I know as a nurse, I can't go into pediatric nurses because I can't push no baby out. I never did that. There's pediatric nurses that can't do what I do. They don't know how to run cardiac drip. I stay in my lane. They stay in their lane. So these lawyers not a, probably wasn't in no lane or wherever because they were new lawyers. They took on a task more than they can handle. And once you noticed that, you were supposed to pull back, baby. OK, I'm just going to say that have more faith in your peoples, because even though Candace Owens probably won't like you that much, she'll be like, we're going to get together because your, your, your enemy is me, me enemy, Sukasa. Let's do this. That's how and that's what I'm going to close off. That's how we supposed to be as black people. I know we got issues with each other. I know you don't like the way I come off. I mean, I like the way you come off. I live this life. You live this life. We've been so indoctrinated with everyone else's culture that we literally bump heads as a nation of people, even though we don't call ourselves a nation of people. What I will say is that I love you, Tasha K. I'll probably be the only one that is on YouTube that's going to post something like this, but I want you to keep on rocking and staying strong because as she said, she worked for this. She did this by herself from the bottom to the top. I want you guys to actually listen to this full two and a half hour because I didn't listen to it all. First 45 minutes caught me. I was like, you know what, baby? Everything that she said in the first 45 minutes was everything that I was saying. So let's, let me just react to that for you guys and direct y'all to watch her full video and put some respect on Tasha's name. And we're going to keep our eyes open for actually what goes on. Um, Hey, Mr. Carson, how you doing? I see you had tight text a lot. I didn't even see all that. I just been going in. But I, what I will say is that we're going to have to send love and blessings to uh actually uh Tasha K. What do you say? Officer of the courts are lawyers inquirers and attorneys um their alliance is to the court and the judge first and foremost and as soon as one retain these entities you have transformed your jurisdiction remedies and rights over to them yes you did and they're going to apply it how they want to apply it if you don't understand law say what you say mr carson god's rights statutes codes and ordinance are in the book of leviticus numbers and deuteronomy what he say? Black Jesus. Y'all know my Hebrew, but gonna have to finish off with judge of God, judge him. Because at the end of the day, Cardi B, you're gonna get exactly what you put out. Tasha K got what she put out. She admit to it. She's being honest. But I pray that one day you be honest and you, you, you know, really just, I mean, just, just woosa. You know, and stop trying to control what people say, focusing on your, your life, your kids. Like, I just want to focus in on being a mother. Focus in on being a mother. Make some album. Do, do something for real. Maybe help the black community now that you got a black child instead of busting it wide open. Put some respect on Tasha's name. And I'm going to have to go on that note because we're coming back at 9 o'clock. With healthcare topics, we got some good healthcare topics to talk about. We're going to talk about nanotechnology and all types of stuff. And the black scientists that allegedly found the cure for cancer. But we're going to talk about it. I'm sorry. Because you are that, you are capable. You are gifted. And you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. 
It's okay to be soft. It's okay to be opinionated. It's okay to be different. And it's so okay to just be